Congrats. You're the proud owner of your brand new decentralized ENS domain name. Now you may want to receive ETH to your .eth address. In this video, let's resolve your new ENS domain name so you can accept Ether payments and let's discuss. Hey everybody, I'm Gary Palmer Jr., you're you, and together, welcome to Minting Coins. So we just launched uh, the one ENS video talking about where we're at and where we are at is at the 50% mark of all of the possible variations of all ENS domain names being released to the public for auction. And uh, there's been a lot of names that have been registered, I believe over 35, over 37,000 of these ETH names have been secured uh, with the uh, average account receiving maybe about two of these domains or, or placed in just a few bids receiving one or two of, of these names. And if you received and won your name, congratulations. Uh, it's a good feeling to secure your little piece of the pie, your little spot on the the new internet uh, for you know having an easy, memorable, simple to use Ethereum name address that you're going to be able to use for all sorts of different reasons. Some of which I don't even think we can possibly imagine at this point. You know, we're expecting the system to get revamped, the ENS system to get revamped within two years. But uh, as stated in the last video, let's think about where this is going to be not just two years or four years or six years from now, but where, what is going to be the state of Ethereum and the implementation, adoption, and usage of ENS.eth domain names in 10 years from now, or 15, or 20, or 25. This show hasn't even started yet. Uh, this is, is just gonna be amazing. This is just going to explode in terms of creativity, adoption, technology, and uh, I, I don't think it's possible for any of us to truly predict how this is gonna end up. I digress. Here we are right now. And what we can do as an immediate step is to resolve our new .eth domain name so we can receive Ether payments to it. And so in this video, we're going to just dive right into it and uh, go over the process and see if we can make this clear for anyone that's looking to set this up. So let's jump over at myetherwallet.com and let's discuss. <clears throat> All right, so here we are, myetherwallet.com. This is the homepage view. And so we wanna click on, um, what am I gonna do? I guess I'm gonna click on ENS and you want to register your name. And uh, let's say you have already won your name and you're now the owner. Uh, we have this here. Um, do, do, do. Let's see here. And so this says um, this person is the owner, and this is the name, label hash, name hash, owner, highest bid, resolve address, ENS public resolver, ENS registry. And so if uh, this is your address, then we could set up a resolver and we can click this. And then all this information pops up in my Ether wallet. So even if you haven't purchased uh, your name through my Ether wallet, you can get this information through my Ether wallet and uh, make all these changes. Um, <clears throat> by using my Ether wallet, my Ether wallet is filling in some of this information for you that you're going to need to go through these steps. Uh, some of these, uh, some of this information is going to be the same no matter what, and some of this information is going to change depending on what your specific domain name is. So let's look at what we have here. Um, <clears throat> so it says, uh, so this is a two-step process. The first step is to set up the resolver 
for our domain name. And then the second step is going to be to set the address that we want the domain name to resolve to. So the first step is to go to the contracts tab. So uh, over here, let's go to my Ether wallet. Let's click on, click on the contracts tab. And it says choose ENS registry. And here we have ENS registry. And this is the, the one that starts with 0x31, ends in 129b. I'm going to trust my etherwallet.com, HTTPS secure. You can always uh, make sure you're at the right website. And click access. All right, step one complete. Step two, oh, nope, that was step two. Step two complete. Step three, select set resolver. So we have resolver, but separately we have set resolver. We want to click there. Opens up this little box right here. Gives us two fields. We have the node for the bytes 32, and then we have the resolver address. Um, and then back in uh, the instructions on the ENS tab in my Ether wallet, they're saying enter the name hash for your name. And so the name hash, just to show you, uh, the name hash is the domain name dot eth. It's the, it's uh, not just the label, which is the part without eth. The the name hash includes the the domain word and the the dot eth as well. And so we simply take that hash and paste it there in the bytes thirty two node, and then we need to enter the public resolver address. And this is the public resolver address for um, for the ENS system. We just simply paste that there, and then uh, and then we unlock the owner's account. So depending on if you have your private key or one of these other methods, or your Trezor or your Ledger Nano S, you would select it. You would unlock your device, and after you unlocked your wallet, you would click this right button right here, which is step seven. Um, when the, when the, you'll get a dialog box, it'll pop up and uh, to generate and, and send the final send, uh, sending of the transaction and transmitting it to the blockchain to write to the blockchain. Uh, we wanna leave this amount to send a zero. And after you send that transaction from your private wallet, then you can uh, click the link that you'll see. There'll be a, a, a link to check that that transaction went through. Always check that that transaction went through. There can be a problem with my Ether wallet connecting to uh, a node on the network. There could be a problem with the gas. There could be um, all sorts of issues, and like timeout issues, internet connection issues. Um, and so you want to make sure that the transaction went through and you'll be able to click to view that transaction on etherscan.io and this is what it should look like it should show down here ens resolver set uh and then for for your name <clears throat> perfect so that's step one complete step one done moving on to step two so step two we want to set the address that we want the actual name to resolve to so, um, same thing, we start by going to the, the Contracts tab. So let's start off the Contracts tab over here. Uh, we, if we're already there, you wanna refresh this page, you can force refresh uh, if, if the normal refresh doesn't work well for you. So step one, go to the Contracts tab. Step two, choose the ENS Public Resolver. So, ENS uh, public resolver, and this is 0x1d, 6ab5, 6ab5, looking for the ones that say 6ab5, this is the only one, selecting that, ENS public resolver, ENS public resolver, all right, I'm going to access, now in the read write contracts section, we want to select set address, this is going to be the address that we want so we have normal address, ADDR, but then we have set ADDR. We want to click set ADDR. And just as before, 
we have the bytes 32 in the address fields pop up. So in uh, step four here, we wanna again enter the name hash, not the label hash, but the name hash. Um, if you're using my ether wallet, they're detailing what the label hash is here because we you know, popped in what the name was up here. Um, but if you're not sure, or if you're not using my ether wallet, you can also get your label hash or your, um, uh, your name hash that you need. You can get that from etherscan.io. But we have it right here, so we would copy this node for the bytes 32. And then in this address bar, um, doo -doo -doo. so they, they, they don't have it right here. I think normally that there's a box up here. Um, if, I, if I was logged in as my address, then, uh, then it would give me a little box up here and that, that box would let me pop in like a variable field that let me say what the uh, uh, payment address that I want the payment to go to. And then it would just, all that would do is just autofill inside the directions on this web page. So, <clears throat> but wherever you want, so wherever you want your new ETH, dom ETH domain name to send payments to, you would simply, uh, in step for step five here, you would simply put that address in, in right here. So whatever your um, public Ethereum address that you want people to send payments to would go here so that when someone send pay sends payments to your uh, .eth address, it's gonna get routed and redirected to this payment address over here. <clears throat> All right, so next step number six, again, unlock your account with whatever method that um, that you're using, private key, key store file, mnemonic phrase, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then simply click right. You click right, and then we're gonna have the approve transaction, send transaction. You're gonna have um, generate and send this transaction. We, didn't want, we wanna leave amount to send as zero, and then click send. And after you click send, then uh, again, the transaction will look like this page. Always click on the link in my ether wallet or take your, uh, your text hash and, and go search it in etherscan.io after it gets posted to the blockchain in about two minutes or so, then uh, it should come back like this and, and give the contract ENS public resolver and, uh, and I'll be super clear and super done and once that's complete, anyone will be able to send Ethereum payments and uh, tokens and information to your, um, your .eth address. And then that information would, you know, that payment would then get redirected to uh, the address that you have connected, the address that you have on file. And uh, it's just really, really simple. It's really exciting. Um, and then, uh, people are going to be able to create subdomains for these and subdomains can have subdomains. Um, you'll be able to, um, you know, if you have, uh, uh, it's just so, so many options, there's so many different things you could do, uh, with these Ethereum names. I think that, um, personally, in my humble opinion, the best thing to do is to consider securing your personal names, consider securing your business names, uh, just as you would if the .com version was available. And uh, worst case scenario, according to the way the system is set up, one year later, you'll have the option of releasing that fish back into the wild and allowing all of your uh, ether, all of that ether to come back to you after you release that name. So you can purchase it now, realize, you know, I really don't want this name, and then get 99.9% of that Ethereum back that um, that you use to secure, to, to lock in and hold this domain, which may have huge potential and uh, beneficial ramifications for your future on the new decentralized internet uh, for Ethereum. We don't know where this is going. This is super exciting. Pound that like button, share this video, like this video, Subscribe below. 
what other questions do you have? What do you want to know about? What can I help you with? Uh, let me know because I'm really excited to be here. I'm really ex excited to be sharing the news and to be sharing information and to be learning about all of this with you. So uh, um, thank you for showing up. Thank you for being here. And uh, let me know what you think. We'll talk again soon. Until then, I'm glad that we're minting coins.